Hello, happy Thursday. My name is Elizabeth Ricks and this is Thursday Thoughts. I am out um, in the, the field at Wild Song with, oh, this is great, Hatchet's pooping. I'm with Hatchet, he just dropped a dewy. <laughs> uh, you never know what you're gonna get on Thursday Thoughts. And Riggins is, I don't know if you can see his, where's the, where's the camera? Where's, Riggins is somewhere back there. Yeah, let's see, there he goes. Oh, he's on the he's on the walk here. So we're all just hanging out while I try and gather my thoughts. Um, I'm uh, I'm riffing on this in in live time, but something that has kind of been rolling around my brain um, the last 24 hours was the importance of being in conversation with your horse. And the more I I do this um, horse training thing, the more sure that I am that. Um, the best horsemen and women, in my opinion, what, you know, will define what, what good or bad horsemanship is at a later date, but the best horse people are the ones that um, are super, super good at um, helping the horse become heard and understood and making sure that they are heard and understood. But the conversation is constant. And I think in my early years, I used to believe that um, that that was micromanaging a horse, um, particularly in riding, you hear micromanaging a lot, but I think it's really different when you look at um, working with horses as always being in conversation. Um, and which doesn't mean, because um, I also had a hard time with the concept of of being constantly present and always available, you know what I mean? Like just being like super intense and focused. And some people have the ability to do that and have really, really cool results with horses. And then other folks like yours truly get distracted. Um, I have the ability to drop in, don't get me wrong, and, and be really focused, but, but to always be on and always be super intense, I think is, is um, it's a lot of work. But if we can look at the time with our horses as um, as though we are we are with a human partner, and um, you know how does that go when you know a human partner is like, excuse me, Elizabeth, excuse me, Elizabeth, Elizabeth, I have something to say, and I'm never quite um, I'm never quite hearing them. Um, Sorry, we have to pause because I have a horse galloping over here and a dog after him. <laughs> that was fun. I just looked up and I was like, What's, who's that horse over there? <laughs> Rickens had gone from back there all the way to the other end and I had no idea because I'm just deep in, in thought here. <laughs> Okay, so back to the analogy. If someone's always trying to talk to me and I'm not giving them the time of day, like how how are they going to feel about me and about being with me? And and then when I ask them questions or tell them to do something, how how is that going to make them feel? So um, even if you are, you know, stopping to to talk to somebody else or you know tie your shoelace. Dang, you kids are having fun. <laughs> he just did his uh, drive-by Zoom me. Rickens is having so much fun out here. Yeah, so he's, I don't know. Uh, is he trying to get my attention? I wonder. Um, I don't want to anthropomorphize too much, but I do have to, when those sort of things happen, I go, all right, does he need me to pay attention? Does Hatchet, does Hatchet need me to pay attention, right? What, um, you know, what kind of questions can I be answering for them right now? And what kind of questions are they asking? And so, um, you know, wonderful horsemen and women are understand, you know, what a horse is saying through st stress signals and, and body behavior um, and can answer them. And the, the, um, you know, I think the key to the type of relationship that you want to have with your horses is, is in what form you answer them with. Is it is it always um, I'm 
uh, I don't want to hear it. Just do what I do what I need you to do. Or I hear you, I feel you, but we need to get this done, right? So those are two different feeling things. And the intention behind how we answer a question is pretty powerful. I'm just blown away by how beautiful it is. I don't think he's stressed, but I am going to check in with him. I think he's just, just feeling pretty amazing out here. <laughs> what do you think, Hatchet? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I want to just conclude with a um, story of, uh, of Dolly, who I trailer loaded yesterday. Um, we were practicing because um, on Sunday I went over to her uh, where she was at and uh, this is a, a, a Korab, a quarter horse Arabian mare um, who was going to come to a class on Sunday but wouldn't get in the trailer. So I went out there to try and get her to load in a short amount of time and I very much had the energy of, all right, we got, we got 20 minutes, this is happening. Um, and did not have the time to, to see that through. So it was, um, uh, you know, I could have muscled and um, uh, muscled her through it or been uh, better timed with my aids. Um, but it just, it just felt like uh, we were running out of time and we were, we were losing ground and that probably would have worked if I, if I had, you know, two hours with her. So I came out yesterday and the entire, the entire tone was just focused on asking her questions um, about how she felt about the trailer and how she felt about just taking, you know, just a, a little movement forward or a little movement back. Um, and, and as a result, she loaded, um, she loaded, it, it took a longer time, but the, the scene and the healing behind it was, was much, the, the healing was much greater and the scene was a lot more peaceful. Um, so that was, that was really me just focusing on having a conversation with her instead of telling her what to do. Um, and there's a time and a place for each of those approaches, but um, I really think for long-term lasting healthy relationships, we need to spend more time in the conversation. All right, so that being said, I'm gonna come check in with Rickens here. He just keeps running. Woo yeah, he's totally intrinsically motivated um, to, to run around here. So, um, but I just wanna check in with him and make sure that he's not overwhelmed because it's not often we come out here and it's not often that I'm just kind of doing my own thing and letting him do his own his own devices so hey booty hey pretty boy yeah so I, he's a little activated so I'm just gonna check in with him hi how are you feeling are you ready to go home Says Thursday thoughts are done.